G'day Tamara. Uh, the jacket is finished. This is it folded up. First of all, thank you so much for giving me the time uh, an easygoing approach to this jacket because as a result I think I've been able to make uh, the best jacket I've made yet in this one. I've just been, you know, an, a couple of hours here and a couple of hours there, never, never, ex you know, tiring myself out or anything. So I've been able to concentrate on its detail. How it's folded, uh, how I fold it anyway, is that's its body, that's the head and shoulders folded down, and that's the arms folded in. So arms folded in, head and shoulders folded down so that it makes it a good rectangle, and then folding it like that, and then like that, and then the, that's probably about as small as I can get it anyway, and it's you know, it's a fairly large jacket, but there's a lot in this one. It's a long coat, and it's got three parts. This here, I'm pretty happy with this. This is the removable hood, shoulders, and a rack. So it only comes to here, your chest, or your lower chest. Um, and it's simply held by the elasticized cord that the arm passes through. This here is leather cord. Over time, that will absorb the oils of the jacket and your hands, <clears throat> or you can just put oil on it and it will darken up. You can already see it starting to darken up on this one. Behind it is a sewn in flap. And so when you put it on, you tend to have to hold this up as you pull it in. And then it's just got a little toggle. I wanted to find a nice wooden toggle, but I couldn't find one. Um, but that's easy to replace, you know, just undo the knot. If you do find a lovely toggle, just slide it on there. And that, that moves very smoothly. It's, it's, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, to get that off, you just pull your arms through. You just pull it off over your head like an anorak. Okay? And you, know, you can stash that in a bag or a pocket somewhere else. Or just take that. You know, that's kind of like an umbrella. I would just wear it straight over this. It'd keep my shoulders and head dry just for a run out to the chicken shed or something like that. Okay, that leaves us with the jacket with its lining. So this is a hoodless now jacket. And your, your jacket has given me the focus to be able to come up with a button up. I've wanted, been wanting to do this for a while. So this is a double placket, meaning that the buttons do up normally. And then it's got the, I think it's got a fly flap or fly placket comes over the top. And then those same buttons that have gone through the first placket go back into the slot there. Okay, so that, that second placket is what basically hold, drives the wind drive and driven rain away so that it doesn't get underneath the placket and inside the jacket. I quite like it though. Most people will just do up the first group of buttons and the top placket will just left to flap. I think that looks kind of nice. Rightio, like all jackets of the peak oil design that have this flap over the top of the torso pockets and in those are some spare buttons. Um, spare large buttons and the small ones that the, are used in the cuff. So other jackets have used Velcro but this one much nicer with just the two buttons that this tab tightens up to. So if you needed to adjust that to an exact fit on your wrist with glove on or something like that, you know, easy to do with the button. Okay, um, the hand pockets diagonally accessed and 
free floating uh, wool in there. It's quite cosy. On you, they'll be sitting about where your jean pockets are, I'd imagine. So this would be approximately your waistline, uh, lower waistline, hips maybe, and then arms straight down into that pocket there. And the jacket, as we sized you up, long, takes you down to mid-thigh, I think. So as we discussed, all the edges that typically fray in a jacket like this over the years have been piped with leather. That's kangaroo leather. So the bottom of the jacket and the cuffs have all been piped, as well as the zipper runs. Because that zipper can, you know, it's going to rub up and down on the material, so that leather is going to wear that nicely. Right, opening up the jacket. I um, should mention too, the buttons have been done up, the first set of buttons, male size, side, the last then makes it for female. I've got no idea why there's a difference. Um, opening up the jacket to reveal the liner. I mean, it's, it's called a liner, but essentially it's a garment in its own right. It's not buttoned in or anything like that. Uh, because, you know, you can slide this jacket on and off with the sleeves in its in the jacket sleeves and then it's quick to remove. Just, just pull it out or just slide the jacket off with this on. As you've seen in the pictures, this liner is uh, all wool and it's kimono style. So the way I've done it is that's a torso pocket just with a gusset flap. So you can check, I don't know, a notebook or even the phone, passport and stuff like in that. And that side comes over the top of the other side. And then there's this little loop here. And I've sewn the buttons into where your waistline returns to. So you thread that through. There's a buttonhole at the end and do it up on one of those two buttons. Alternatively, you could replace these buttons with a toggle and just thread the toggle straight into that. Okay. Uh, so, just a double layer or, or kimono style, that goes across, that comes over, do it up, and it's quite a comfortable garment oil skin on the cuffs to protect it, on the placket, and at, the, at its base. And that's the lining. So then in the summer months, or spring and autumn months, the summer months too when it's raining, this jacket can be worn by itself without the lining, and being wax cotton it has this kind of cool cooling effect. It breathes obviously very well, and um, yeah, it's, it's a good garment in the summer. Some people let the wax wear off through the winter and um, spring, and then it just becomes uh, heavy cotton, breathing nicely, wind stopper, and then coming into the winter or the rainier seasons, wax it again. Waxing it is, what I use is um, beeswax and linseed oil, 50-50, melt them, melt them together, Paint it on the jacket, that'll cool it off, it'll go back to its waxy kind of look. Then you get a hairdryer or hang it in front of the fire or a radiator and it melts again and soaks into the fabric and you push it into the seams and, and things like that. So the thing about linseed oil is it uh, doesn't dry, it goes uh, sets basically into a kind of um, gummy, um, gummy resin, very thin, but it would stiffen it up. It stiffens up the coat a lot and when it warms up from your body heat it loosens up again so if you didn't want that you could possibly use lanolin that's sheep um, wool oil instead of um, um, instead of uh, linseed oil mix it with the with the beeswax and then it would be uh, remain soft but oily um, otherwise there's stuff out there like Nick Wax. I'm not 100% sure what everything that's in Nick Wax, but I'm pretty sure it's beeswax based. 
and uh, maybe paraffin wax in with that or something like that. Anyway, that's that's how to reproof your coat. Um, yeah, I'm pretty proud of this coat. I can't wait to see it on you. Thanks again for the business. See ya.